Good morning, all of you. Today is our last class in the semester where we are looking at collaborative innovation. So, you know, this is the third part of the series where we looked at the Z line pump, which was the first uh, study where we said how innovation uh, happened and you know became a runaway success for seven years. Every petrol station in the uh, in the cities was sporting the Z line pump, and then came our you know second case study where we talked about the bullet dispenser which again you know completely got popular and it came out all over the country again and replaced the Z line as the modern pump so we now had one more you know project coming our way and by this time i had completed the whole study of how collaborative innovation can happen innovation happens when the product reaches the end user very clear we can just can't call it innovative if it is not reached the end user so the focus of today's class would be to sort of assimilate all our learnings from our seven, you know, uh, C's, this and and we I think had some five case studies in the seven C's, in-depth case studies highlighting each aspect of innovation, each aspect which became the pinnacle for each of those innovation journeys, and collaborative innovation, you know, of course, was the key where we looked at core teams who are like you know do and die they're fully on the job. We have the enterprise-wide teams which give you the creative and the critical check. Of where to go, and then we had the external team, which is also uh, you know uh, we calling the teams. They are support structures, which give you tremendous amount of inputs and understanding of the users, understanding of the materials and manufacturing, understanding of the processes, research domain, sociology domain, multiple things which come from the uh, external team. So these things happened constantly in all the things, and this was the outcome of the you know PhD research I did at IIT Delhi, and now we have a project in hand. How do we handle the project which has come to us from NID? So NID, uh, you know, is well-known design school in the country, and uh, ONGC approached National Institute of Design, uh, and Pradimya Vyas, who is the director of NID, also an alumnus from IIT Bombay, approached me because I was working in petrol pumps for you know last two decades, and we built a you know wonderful team, and then we collaborated with Midco again, which is a manufacturing company. Day one in the project, which is unheard of. So these are the images, which are like computer renderings, which are not very detailed. They are like mock renderings from the computer, where the student quickly picks up, or some designers quickly did some sketches, and they said these are the you know <coughs> possible options because ONGC had a large branding exercise. They went to brand managers across the country, got to the best brand company, and they decided they'll call their brand the Oval Dispenser. Or the oval will be their brand. So then, you know, we had uh, Manoj Dubey, who was the master of design from IIT Delhi, who joined Midco at that time when we came up with the bullet dispenser, which was the earliest success story. So he immediately conceived the total product with all the parts and organization of the projects. So I was the consultant for Midco as well as working with NID. Uh, so we had this, you know, collaborative team. So we quickly worked out what type of product organization which will happen. Product organization is very important. Where will each part go in the product? How will the parts be organized? So where will the electronics be? How will the hydraulics work? You see that large scale drawing where we talked about every part of the product. Now we are making foam 3D mockups using digital printing and the product looks like real. What is this? This is a working rig of the mockup. Does it look anything? It has little bit similarities to the mock-up, but all the parts are just put together. This is a very, very important uh, component in uh, innovation and creativity, where you just make the product work. You, you, in electronics, you know, you put a breadboard and get your circuit running. It's like that. It's a rig. You put things together in whichever fashion, and you make the pump run. Look at that guy. He's actually feel, you know, filling petrol. He's checking up accuracies. Look at that panel. We just picked up the Midco panel, the old one, just to put the panel over there. It doesn't use all the right components. So you you just rig things together and make a working rig very quickly. So we're still not cross the prototyping stage. We're still half in the prototyping stage by making the working rig. So even prototyping became very very high tech. Earlier, remember in the Z line, I prototype using hand tools. Now we are prototyping using. CNC tools and this can be done, you know, uh, very effectively. Then we built all the structures inside with very, very high accuracy to fit the pumps and the motors. So it's like a monocoque. See, within those 
15 years from Z-Line to the bullet to the, you know, oval, the technology had gone leaps and bounds. Electronics technology and microchip technology. So this particular LCD panels, what you see were, you know, very, very high end when compared to the Z-Line or the bullet. Remember our formula was very clear. Use creative ideation, use contemporary technology and materials, and then you will be having innovative product in your hand. So all that was, you know, the, the formula was same what we did for all the projects. And then, you know, we came up with you know, a very good organization, improved the pumps and the meters, and like, you know, the, then took it forward. And then we reached the final prototype. Look at the painted model. I was showing you the unpainted model. So here we are, we are like, you know, created a pump which is tremendous user convenience. Now tell me, why is the hose again come down? In the bullet, we had the hose from the top. Because there's a lot of innovation in the hose technology by then. The hoses became lightweight. They were easy to take around. And the oval dispenser said that we don't want hoses to come from the top because of a branding issue. So we had to, you know, innovate on the hose material itself. And the hose material is made out of PU. And that's very, very light. So the convenience to the user is not lost. Then we have this, you know, the display reaches the person in front of the car. The display comes in front. The use of contemporary technology for user delight. We use the best displays, light signages, modular assembly, lot of components inside are modular in nature. We had the oval shape coming up very well, which was very well appreciated. And the fuel dispensing was visible from those flow ports, which again was a very novel feature in the, in the pump. So, you know, this also makes the pump look very inviting and new. So, because of the light on the side, and then we reached very quickly the pilot production stage. So we had a large collaborative team to work in. A lot of people put, to, put their hands together to come to, you know, this particular very, very different, you know, pump. And the whole world stood up to see the pump, you know, from, you know, Europe to US. They were pretty shocked that, you know, we could come up with a pump which is like so different at the same time using all the new technologies in the petrol pump uh, business. And uh, you can now see the range, the mock-up, the rig, and the final product. You can imagine that it's pretty close. We had to create seven pumps and put them up uh, at Mangalore. They have a large refinery in Mangalore. And they said, we'll first put our first station, petrol station in Mangalore. The decision was taken very quickly. And we were like, you know, both at IIT Bombay, Midco, and uh, NID, we worked relentlessly for you know a year to make these products you know come to the market and then these were launched uh, in Mangalore so these are all the seven uh, you know the pilot production pumps on the display in the station and then all the other paraphilia around the air, air the you know like uh, the printers and the uh, you know oil dispensers they all did a little bit of you know uh, similar branding and product uh, organization for that and look at this uh, display being stuck to the windscreen of cars and people are extremely thrilled on its working. We know now it's very easy to put a display, uh, you know, because we have, you know, today you have an app and I can see what's happening on my pump in my mobile. If I can, you know, get an app, Indian Oil can start an app and I can actually see my dispensing happening on my mobile tomorrow. It's that cool today. But this was in 2004 and we did this uh, work and then, you know, this is our uh, sort of uh, first day's uh, business. A uh, lot of people poured in because the, the petrol was cheaper than the Indian oil station next door. So that was one of the you know, serious problems. So a lot of people came in to fill petrol. These are the signages outside. We call it the totem pole, the symbol outside as well as the uh, like sort of display to say that this is where the petrol pump is. So you can see how we, you know, over a decade till 2005. So from 1999, uh, uh, to 2005, we have, you know, these uh, uh, products, which are all the same segment, same product, technology changed, materials changed, you know, features changed because of the way the users changed, right? So that's the whole journey I want to share with you of how we did serial innovation because this didn't reach the innovation because this goes to mass, but you know, still it had all the components and because of political reasons, this didn't go, go to the market. So. It's very interesting. Innovation can be stifled because of various reasons. It could be political. It could be, you know, lack of funds. It could be, you know, lack of uh, you know, sort of uh, will of the management. There could be so many things coming. So what is challenging is all innovation journeys are very, very complex. And you need to understand all the parts very carefully and then be very attentive from the beginning to take these, you know, uh, things forward.